Hey boys and girls, welcome to Art Recycled. Today, we are gonna learn how to use the grid method to enlarge a picture. Now, I do this with my fourth graders and they take comics from the newspaper and they divide the comic from the newspaper into four boxes and then take a larger sheet of paper and they fold it in half each way to make four boxes and then they are able to enlarge this one inch by one inch comic 12 times to a 12 inch by 12 inch picture. It's a great way to teach proportions and mathematical drawing. Now, we use comics because we study Roy Lichtenstein, who's a famous pop artist from the 1960s. He took comics and he kind of put these dots in the background to kind of show the pixelization of the comics in the newspaper. So we are going to get started today. You can use whatever drawing materials you want, but my students typically start with pencil, then they sharpie it, and then they use colored pencils to color these in and then they use paint dotters to do the dots in the background. But again, you can color this however you want. So boys and girls, let's get started. You're gonna need some comics from the newspaper and whatever you're drawing with. All right, so to get started picking the comic that I wanna do for my project, I have my comic newspaper here and what I have is a one inch by one inch red square. You're gonna draw a one inch by one inch square around only the head of the comic that you want. For my students, I pre-cut these red squares just because it's such a small measurement. It's just easier if they have something to trace. If you're doing this at home and you don't have this pre-cut square, you could just take your ruler and measure one inch by one inch around a comic's head. So what also helps with this red square is my students are able to take this and they can see that obviously here with peanuts, if this red one inch by one inch square fits around the entire comic's body, that comic is way too small. It's going to be too hard for them to do when they blow it up on their larger paper, which is going to be 12 inches by 12 inches. Likewise, if the head of the comic is too big and it goes outside of this red square, they know that won't work either. So looking at the comics that I have here, you can see John from Garfield would actually be the perfect candidate because only his head fits under this square. Whereas Charlie Brown here or the comics here are way too small. So once you find a comic that works where only the head of the comic or the shoulders fits under this red square, you're gonna lay that red square on top of the comic's face. And then you're gonna take your pencil. I'm gonna do this with a Sharpie pen, but I tell my students to use pencil and go around and trace that red square, trying to hold it as still as they can because in this project, the measurements do matter. So now I'm gonna remove it. And now I'm gonna take my ruler and what I wanna do is I wanna divide this one inch by one inch square into four boxes so that it looks like a window. So that means I'm dividing it in half each way. And that means I'm looking at zero here on my ruler on the left hand side and I'm looking at one inch over here on the right hand side and that one inch mark lines up with this line. Now what I'm looking for is the half inch mark. And if I can zoom in, maybe you can see it a little bit better. All right, so that's a little closer there. So here's John from, John from Garfield. I don't know if you can see, but there's zero on the left-hand line and one is right on this right-hand line. So I'm looking for a half inch. The half inch mark is the longest line between zero and one and it's right smack in the center. So I'm gonna make a mark here and then I'm going to flip my ruler this way, line up the ruler, and I'm going to draw a straight line across John's head there with my pencil. Then I'm gonna line up zero with the top line, and that means one is lined up with the bottom line. I'm looking for the half inch mark. It's right there in the center. Now I'm gonna flip my ruler this way, and I'm going to draw a straight line going this direction. Now it's obviously a lot easier to measure this if you measure it before you cut this square out. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut this out. Now when I cut this out, it's a lot easier to do if basically I cut a chunk of the newspaper out like this and that's because newspaper paper is so flimsy, it's very hard to cut this out and not ruin that measurement. So I cut a little chunk out first and now all I have to do with my scissors is I have to cut straight lines. So I'm just gonna cut a straight line up there and here and here and now I don't have to turn around this little square. And voila, there is my little comic and my measurements are still pretty accurate. 
Um, I didn't cut it too small. I cut on the black lines and it looks pretty good. So now I have a two inch by two inch black square and I'm going to take liquid glue or glue stick tape, whatever you have, and I'm going to put a dot on that black square and I'm going to take my small comic, line them up, and then I'm going to stick them there in the middle of the black square. And this is what my entire project is based off of. And then I have my students sign their name at the bottom and I tell them don't lose it because your whole project is based off of this. All right, so now the next part of this project is taking my little comic and blowing it up 12 times on a 12 inch by 12 inch paper. So I need to get these boxes on this paper too. So what I'm going to do, it's much easier with a bigger paper. I'm just going to fold it in half one way and then open it and fold it in half the other way. That divides it into four equal boxes, six inches by six inches. All right, so now I'm just going to take my ruler and my pencil and I'm gonna lightly draw um, over these folds so that the grid shows up, the same grid that's on my little comic. So now the next step is you're gonna look at your little comic and say to yourself, what is the easiest box to start in? And it's different for every kid, every person, because they pick different comics. So for me, looking at my comic, the easiest box is definitely the upper left because it has the least amount of lines. So I'm gonna start in this box, and here's the rule. You can't go on to another box until you've drawn all the lines in the first box. And I'm gonna use math to do this, fractions like one half, one four, three fourths, and so on. And here's how I do that. I see that John's hair starts about one half of the way across the bottom of this box. So I'm gonna make a dot right there. If I follow the line of his hair as it bumps up and curves out, I kind of see it goes through the center of the box, but then it ends about, I would say, two thirds of the way up this line. And I always help find the middle first. That helps me figure out my fraction. So if this is the middle and this is one half, I know that two thirds is just a little bit higher. So I'm gonna make a dot there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna attempt to draw that line little by little. I see a bump here, another bump here, he has three pieces of hair that all kind of bump out that way. And then this kind of curves up and slants down and hits there. The second line that I see is the inner line of his hair that touches his skin. And I see that that's about one fourth of the way across the, across the bottom. And then as I go up, it's almost a little bit higher than one half of the way here. So I make a dot there. Notice the two fractions. So now I'm gonna go up, I see a bump, I see another bump here, and then I see a bump that curves out and hits there. Now that's all the lines pretty much that I see in that box. I guess I see a little line right there, but other than that, that box is finished. So now here's the next rule. I can go to this box or this box, but the one box I can't go to is this one because it doesn't touch the box I started with. So now looking at this box or this box, I'm gonna to say to myself, which one looks easier because it has less lines? For me, I'm actually thinking it's this box. So now what I see is I'm gonna continue John's hair and I see that it goes about halfway across the box, another fraction. So I know that his hair is gonna continue down, this bumps up, this bumps out, and around, back up, and then I see another bump here and it meets up there. Now I see a little part of his forehead that comes down and then John's eyes are huge. I see one eye touches about halfway up this box. It curves up, curls down, and then it touches almost about one half, I would say to one fourth of the way across this line. So that line, his eyes are very big. I see the next eye touches here, it comes up, curves down, it's a little bit past halfway, goes right about there, maybe it's at the halfway mark. I see his eyeballs kind of start in this box. So I'm gonna draw a shape here and a shape here, but his eyeballs cross into that box down there. And then I see that a little bit of his eye, I missed it, goes into this box and then it curves right down like that. So now, I can choose to go to this box, but that's my hardest box. I might save that for last. I'm actually gonna jump to this box.
All right. So now I am in this box, the hardest box. And you do the hardest box last because you want to be able to match up lines here and here. And that makes it easier for me to draw the hardest box. So now this is pretty much finished. What I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the grid lines, these lines, and I'm going to Sharpie the cartoon. All right, so now anything that you can see that was black, I kind of colored in black with a Sharpie. It's a really big black area. I tend to um, have my kids use a jumbo Sharpie to color that in, like if the hair is all black or something of that sort. Um, I give them a much bigger tool, but I tell them to color it in with Sharpie because Sharpie is that nice dark black that you kind of see in comics anyway as they go through that printing process. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase the grid and then I'm gonna use colored pencils to start coloring. All right, and there my comic is all colored. The last step of my pop art process is doing the pixels or the dots that Roy Lichtenstein would put into his comics. And I always kind of tell the kids, don't pick the same color that's in your comic. So if I have like brown or blue or kind of this peach color, I'm actually gonna pick a much brighter color that's not in this. So I'm going to pick a nice orange color. And with these, are, these are tempered dotters. You could draw your dots, but I'm just going to use these. It's much easier. I'm going to press and squeeze and take the horizontal edge of my paper first and go across like this, trying to get my dots even. And then I'm going to pick a vertical edge and go down vertically and trying to evenly space them out because pixels go in rows. And as you can see, I'm not perfect, but just trying my best. And then I can line them up going horizontally and vertically like this. If one doesn't perfectly fit, then obviously I don't put a dot there. Like right there, I think that's kind of tight. I'm not gonna put one there, I'm gonna skip. And then I keep going and I just fill the whole background in with these dots. And that's pretty much it, boys and girls. Now my pop cart art cartoon is pretty much completed and you learned how to use the grid method of drawing, which really, again, you could use any size square for your little square and any size square for your big square. And you could just fold your papers in half each way and then you get four boxes on each side. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will see you next time on Art Recycled. Bye.